Have you ever wanted to create a video game? It's one thing to start working on a game, but it's incredibly difficult to finish one. And since 2023 just started, I think it's the perfect time for us to learn how to do just that. But here's the catch. See, I've got more important projects that I should be working on. So my goal in this video series is to go from nothing to a full game and show you each step of the process from creating a prototype to uploading and releasing on Steam in under one month. Let's get started. Our first step is to plan out what type of game we want to make. There are endless genres to pick from, but since we only have one month, we need to pick one that we can reliably finish in that time. So RPGs, no. Open world survival, also no. Multiplayer, god no, I'd rather commit Sudoku. There is one genre that I'm pretty confident we can pull off, and that is roguelike horde survival games. These are games such as Vampire Survivors or Rogue Genesia. There's already a lot of medieval -y themed ones, so let's go a bit of a different direction on that and do some cyberpunk themes. I think it would be pretty refreshing. Also, it's going to be 3D because I somehow skipped that part of game dev where you learn to make anything in 2D. But enough chit chat, let's hop right into it. So on the first day, I added a basic flat grid, and then to represent the player, I added the classic beam, and added movement so it can move around with my keyboard. I then hopped into Blender, made a super realistic looking gun that goes <laughs> then placed it in the bean's hand that he doesn't have. I made the body turn to face the mouse pointer, kinda. So after I fixed that rotation, I added these very realistic bullets to match our realistic gun. Next was to spawn in some enemies. These are also going to be beans, but I painted them red to show that they are angry. I want them to spawn just outside of our field of view, so I wrote some pretty simple code that spawns them in a circle around the player. Anyway, the enemies are going to slowly move towards you, and I tried to rig up a camera to follow the player. After one or two tries, I got that figured out and slapped a health bar on top of him. I set up a simple slider to display how much health the player has. And I, I tried doing this using World Canvas, but I didn't like how the lighting behaved on it or how it would get blocked by other objects in front of it. So I wound up swapping that out to use a different one that is on the main overlay canvas. I then created an experience shard that drops when the player kills an enemy, granting him a bit of experience. On the second day, I added a bit more functionality to these experience shards. So now when the player is in range, they get vacuumed in. I then wrote some code to add points from the experience shards to the player's experience stat. I'm using these blue cubes to display them for now. In the future, we can add different colors and tiers of these experience shards for higher tiered enemies. As this experience stat increases, the player's level will go up, yada yada yada, I think you guys know how that works. There's now a little blue bar below the health that shows the progress of each level and a number indicating which level the player is. So now that the player has the ability to level up, we need a way to reward them. So let's integrate a common roguelike mechanic and give the player a choice between a few different upgrades. I really enjoy games that do this because it gives a bit of replayability, allowing the player to try out different builds and prioritize different upgrades. So for day three, I started by creating some UI to display these rewards. Now when your player levels up, you're presented with options. For this example, uh, we only have one option, speed. When selecting these rewards as an, okay, maybe I added a little too much speed. But like I said, when you select one of these as a reward, a buff is applied to that stat on the player. I added a few different options such as uh, rate of fire and pickup radius. They are pretty self-explanatory what they do. I have a huge list of other upgrades to add, but for now, this is perfect for prototyping out the system. I also added a timer at the top of the screen, so now you can see how long the player has survived. We will later use this uh, time survive to calculate rewards and the like, but for now it's just cosmetic. Day four, I started by building out a weapon system. Eventually, I'd like to give the player the option to take multiple weapons, but for now, you're just going to pick one weapon on round start, unless I made a mistake, in which case you're just kind of screwed. So to build out some examples, I added two separate weapons, a scout rifle that's slower firing but does more damage, and an auto rifle that fires rapidly but will do less damage. After goofing around with this for a bit, I felt that I needed to get a real city environment going. So I do what I always do when I need models and am too lazy to learn how to create them myself. I just tell myself I lack the talent and then I download a pack from Cinti. Link down below. But remember, the goal here is to complete a game in one month. Spend time on what you're proficient at and where you're inadequate, make up for it by using the Unity Asset Store. Also, remember I did some procedural generation experiments in the past? 
well, I'm going to bring that into this project, but for now, let's keep it as a stretch goal and just focus on the main gameplay loop to start. So the first thing that I'm going to do is break up a few of the buildings into different segments, such as roads, intersections, corners, etc. And then after lining a few things up, I duplicate them and move them around to give a sample layout of a city. Not polished, of course, it gives me a rough idea of how I want the finished product to look. Now, it looks good, but we need to address some issues with spawning. Previously, we had the enemies all spawning in a circle around the player, but now that we have buildings, the enemies are going to be spawning inside of some of them. And having enemies running through walls like that dude in the Terminator just looks super unpolished. So I could either remove the ground, send those poor unlucky souls to the Shadow Realm, or I could rewrite my code to only spawn enemies on valid spawning platforms. Now these spawn zones are pretty cool, and since I want to spawn enemies as close to the player as possible without being in the field of view, and since our player is going to be moving around our map, we need to make the system a bit more dynamic and give it the ability to individually mark zones as spawnable or unspawnable. I set up two colliders. The first is a red no spawn zone. If uh, any of the spawn zones touch this collider, it's marked as unspawnable. I then made a second collider, and if anything touches this one, it's marked as spawnable until it leaves and then it's unspawnable again. Let me just show a demonstration. So now the player can move around and the enemies will continue to spawn just outside of their viewable range. Today, it's time to remove the beam. So we're going to add an actual humanoid character. I'm gonna add some locomotion animations and aiming as well. So when he's running around the city, it looks a bit nicer. And now we have a much more presentable concept. I also wrote a bunch of code for uh, some basic scene loading and menus, which is important, but not particularly interesting. So let's avoid looking at the options menu and talk about rolling. So we're going to start this day off by adding some dodge rolls. They're pretty self-explanatory. The player can now roll in whichever direction they are walking in. I also added invulnerability to the player when rolling, preventing him from taking any damage. I want to build out a mechanic to limit the amount of rolls the player has with, say, the roll charges regening over time. But first, I think we need to replace our angry beans. So I replaced it with a humanoid skin as well, also from that Cinti pack, and it now runs after the player. I'm using a robot skin for now. I'm considering switching this out to zombies. I'm not sure which one I prefer, so let me know down in the comments which direction you think I should take. Regardless, I also added a new texture to the cursor, so instead of the pointer, it's now a crosshair. I also added a red flash to the enemies when you hit them. And last bit of flare was to add a little muzzle flash to the player's gun when it's shot. Next thing I'm going to add is a bunch of guns and meta progression, but if you want to check that out, you're going to have to subscribe to catch the next episode, new videos every Saturday this month until the game is released, unless it's already out, in which case, watch it here. See ya.